the sniff me out, get to Australia. <laughs> Welcome to Modern Grand Tour with me, Garland Lowe. After completing the European leg of my round the world journey, we now arrive in the world's largest country, Russia. Riding the full length of the famous Trans-Siberian Railway, we'll couch surf with locals along the way to get an insider's view of the fascinating Russian culture. Beginning in the western part of this Eurasian country, my new Russian friends and I explore St. Petersburg, Moscow, Vladimir Suzdal, Nizhny Novgorod, Perm and Yekaterinburg. Then in the eastern part we discover Tobolsk and Tumen, Novosibirsk, Okutsk and Okhon Island, Ulan Ude, Habarovsk and finally Vladivostok. In this fifth episode across Russia and the 13th in this modern Grand Tour series, we'll go trampolining, visit the last surviving gulag and of course meet the locals. So let's explore the city of Pyrm. The easternmost city in Europe, Pyrm is the last major train stop before entering Asia and is known as the gateway to Siberia. A historically industrial city, but now with an up and coming cultural scene, Pyrm may be most famous for being the location of the last surviving gulag in Russia, which was the reason I decided to stop off here. But first, I went to explore the city with my couch surfing host, Anna. So this is the letter P, it's the symbol of your city. Ta da! It is the letter P for Pyrm. Now, the English people looking at this will be thinking, that's not the letter P. Yeah, it's some chair. It's a chair. Yeah. <laughs> it's a chair. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a, like a chair yeah. or a but table. Uh, oh, but it is a letter P. It's it, not the English letter P, is it? Yeah, it's Russian. Russian letter so P. So it's the Cyr Cyrillic Russian P. Mm -hmm. Every year, somebody uh, tried to burn it. Uh, burn why? It. It's um, from wood. <laughs> is this like a tradition? No, it's Or is it like a child? Uh, like a, yeah, yeah. Like it's a hooligan? Like a like, like child, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Can you imagine somebody set it on fire? And it went, it would look amazing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Some performance. Maybe we could come back tonight and uh, uh, try. try. Okay. It would be a really good documentary. You want, we can make it. <laughs> We've just been walking and we just, uh, Anna showed me uh, this massive river called the River Karma. Karma. Uh, and um, <laughs> We've just, there's a wedding, there's a wedding going on down there. So what is a traditional Russian Orthodox wedding? Um, you organize some friends, uh, you wear some um, expensive um, white dress and with your guy you um, have uh, a photographer okay. who took a picture yeah. of um, simple popular places and city. Okay, okay, yeah. So when you get married, will you have a marriage like this with the white ground oh, no, no. and uh, yeah, in the morning no. and... No, 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 no. Why, why, why not? Uh, not so um, loud, not so for all. It's oh, okay. just Smaller. only for friends, it's just only for my parents maybe. Okay. Uh, it, mm, it's mine. Okay. It's my wedding. It's my relationship. Why should I uh, show it? All people around. What is the average age? That mm, 25. 25 is the age of uh, having children. Okay, yeah. And after 25, uh, people consider that it's not normal, it's not so healthy. Ah, okay. And, oh, wow. Uh, so yeah, 25, yeah. there's an actual number. Yeah. People always say 25. 25. 25. Anna, do you not think this is romantic? Uh, it's traditional romantic. Every family has this. This photo. photo. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Always <laughs> here. Yes. Girls who I know uh, dreams about wedding, dreams about family, okay. about children, and yep. about no walking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no but, working. So uh, traditional gender roles. Yeah, yeah. Women does the yeah, housework yeah. and the man. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just drive a car, clean up kitchen. Would you not uh, like to do this? Take like care of children. Uh, mm, have good nails and hair, hair stuff. No, it's okay. It's, it's okay. Why it's not? Okay. Why sure. not? Right. Yeah. It's, but it's different for me. Happiness is not behind the mountain. Happiness is not behind the mountain. I understand the sentence. What does it mean? Uh, people think about uh, happiness really far. But this uh, label, this label said about it's not so far. It's here. It's not behind the mountains. <laughs> I, I know this problem and uh, every day I search I, and I try to find happiness. But happiness is here, it's 
<laughs> I then accompanied Anna to her job, where she works quite awesomely as a trampoline instructor. In my first ever trampoline lesson, I will show the basics. First, touch the knees. Then the toes. Do the splits. Bounce on your bum. Bounce on your bum and turn. Bounce on your bum and turn and immediately bounce on your bum again. I then spotted this and taking a break from my knackering lesson, I couldn't resist. Because who doesn't love jumping into a pit of foam cubes? I'm going to sit down, spin, sit down, back up again. If I can do that, I'm happy. I don't know what I'd be doing this when I come to Russia. Satisfied that I was now at Olympic level, we returned to Anna's apartment where we were joined by Anna's boyfriend, Max. My knowledge of Russia only comes from the Western media, which is why I was so interested to come to Russia so I can get a, another perspective. When in the English media we see Putin, a lot of the pictures that come up are him doing very macho kind of things. Is this the image that you see of him in Russia? And does this make him appear to be a stronger leader? Or do some people think, this is strange? It was for, for some part of Russia, and it's worked for, for some part of Russia. For some part of Russia, like the young and educated, <laughs> yeah, it was, looks funny. In the British media, Russia is bad because they came to Ukraine and took this land. They have to know that all population in Crimea was for Russia. I understand that it's not uh, legal to do something like this, but I think uh, Putin do it uh, because NATO bombing uh, Belgrade without decision of own. So he understands that there are no so firm rules. And not everything is good and bad and black and white is much more complicated. And that's why uh, the many young uh, men and try to uh, not think about politics. Sure. It's, it's too many stress. In the British media we heard about uh, Pussy Riot. Mm. Yeah. And so it appeared that there were young people in Russia who were prepared to sh say we want change. No, they are just a m m musical group. You don't see their ideas at all, they yeah. just tell them that Putin is bad. And at the moment there are no good alternatives. All guys who are uh, involved in politics, uh, they all... Uh, corrupt? And they all uh, about corrupt. If there are no people who want to make a real change, this cycle will just keep going. Yeah. So I'd like to think in some time in the future, there will be at least one person who, who is not corrupt, who can make the change. Mm -hmm. But it would require people like you guys to vote for this person. I am waiting for you. Yeah, yeah, you're still waiting for this person. Yeah. The next day, Anna's friend Daniel and I drove to Russia's only surviving gulag. What do you know about the gulag? What were you taught in school about this? Uh, honestly, not so much. <laughs> it's just a uh, repression method of, of Stalin's. <laughs> yeah. Pyrn 36 is a repression story within a repression story. Opened under Joseph Stalin after the Second World War, it continued operating after other gulags officially closed in 1960. When it finally closed towards the end of the Soviet Union in the late 1980s, volunteers set about creating a museum dedicated to the victims of political repression. 
However, after 20 years of the museum's independence, in 2015, on the back of resurgent nationalism, especially after the annexation of Crimea, national authorities took over management. This has resulted in a revision in the museum's narrative, where previous displays about political repression have been replaced with displays highlighting the functional aspects of the Gulag, such as mining and timber production. The man is happy with his ability to forget bad things. Memory always ready to forget bad and remember only good. Unlike the excellent Gulag History Museum I visited in Moscow, Pyrm 36 may well say more about the political agenda of those in power than it does about the realities of history. I think what is the most interesting, shocking thing for me is the story of the people. Many of these people would have been innocent people, people who we really didn't do anything bad. People who, were, who might have just said something like, I disagree with the Soviet regime. And then suddenly they end up in places like this. I think the only way that I could make it resonate with people or resonate with Daniel over here. Imagine if somebody just came and took away you or your brother or your mum or your dad and put them here. And they had to stay here for, for 10 years. And they would say, why? I did nothing wrong. This is the most disturbing thing about this type of place. Lots of people who, because of their maybe ethnicity, sexual preference, religion, political views, or maybe just because of none of these reasons, um, because someone decided to gossip about them, and they would end up in a place like this. Yeah. So Daniel, what do you think about PM36? I enjoy. You enjoyed it? You liked yeah. it? That's interesting to know something new. Yeah. Especially about your region, about people. Mm. But it's a scary place. Yeah. It was with, with bad karma. Yeah. Yeah. So Anna has just set up a projector and look at this. There's like something on the wall. For my last activity in Pyrm, Anna and I relaxed with her favourite computer game, which happened to be the most surreal and difficult puzzle game I have ever played, and that was including reading the cheats from her phone. I'm confident we can do this, we just need to use our brain and work it out. And use cheats. And use cheats, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need potato! We need a potato! <laughs> yeah, yes. You should go yeah. up. Ah, you should go there. Down, down, go down. We get always right, always right, always right. Are we literally going in a circle? Oh. Where's the potato? Where's the potato? Nobody knows what to do. I didn't realise my brain had to do so much work tonight. This is totally mind blowing. What is going on right now? Yeah! Where's the potato? <laughs> and so back on the train with my victorious virtual potato and reflecting on my last two days, I could conclude that Pyrm was a city that I will remember fondly, not necessarily because of what I saw or done, but rather who I met. With her warmth and openness, Anna made me feel instantly at ease in this new city, and this was highlighted in the activities that I would not normally do but when in the right company, I found extremely enjoyable. Join me in the next episode of Modern Grand Tour, where we'll be in Yekaterinburg, and where we'll visit the forest where the murdered body of Russia's last Tsar was secretly buried, go on a quirky, I mean quirky, self-guided walking tour of the city, and of course, meet the locals. So until next time, Godspeed.